Hi folks, we'll get started in just a little while. I just want to see if everybody's around. I know for some of us it's late in the day. So if you'd like to drop in the chat where you're coming in from, that would be great. And we'll get started in a few minutes. Okay, I think it's okay to start now. I've seen a couple of people online. Hey, Vanessa? Mm -hmm. Um, Chat is disabled if you want to enable it. Oh. Hey, I think we can get started. Sorry about the technical difficulties. This is our first week of the fall. We're so excited to welcome you all here. My name is Vanessa Rabankwa. I'm a developer experience community manager and shortly who will be joining me, my colleague Priyanka, aka Pinky Ravi. Um, this is an intro to GetOps and Flux. I am so excited to see you all in the chat. Oh, great. We have some London people. So I should say good evening, good afternoon and good morning. I can't wait to get started. So next slide, please, Pinky. Right. A little bit of background. If this is your first time coming to one of our events that we've been running, the company I work for, as I said, is WeaveWorks. If you haven't heard of us, we're a startup with globally distributed and remote working force. A lot of what we do are based on open source. You might have heard of some of our projects such as Flux and Flagger, which we donated to the CNCF as incubated projects at the moment. Flux is also the project that kicked off the term GitOps. I know some of you might have heard of GitOps. It's been working for me great. And it's so cool to see a lot of adopters of the project and see the community grow over a couple of years. That's what I've been doing since I got to WeaveWorks. So much so. That, a large that we have cloud, large cloud vendors as well. Other organizations like Microsoft, Amazon, uh, VMware and others have adopted and we're getting used to this. It's, it's just an amazing project. If you haven't know, we're gonna go through some today. Maybe in the chat, pop in. Are you, you, are you is GitOps well known to you? Is Flux well known to you? Maybe pop it into the chat. So also, Cortex is another one of our projects that we donated to the CNCF that helped make uh, Prometheus scalable. I mentioned that because Prometheus is a key part of the progressive delivery possibilities with Flagger. And of course, other projects like We've Ignite, EKS Cuddle, and now we've got Ops, which is also free and open source tool that provides GitOps to your various needs and has a UI that's actually built on top of Flux. And if you don't know what Flux is, like I said, we'll be going through. And we have many, many more. So if you're interested, definitely check us out on the GitHub under WeaveWorks, as well as the CNCF, where you can find all our various projects. And of course, we are a company that has also a lot of paid products and services as well. So check us out and like Flux support. So if you're interested in learning more, please check those out on GitHub. Next slide, please, Pinky. Great. So 
a little bit of housekeeping. I know it's evening for some of us, but as I mentioned, we've bookmarked about an hour um, for this today uh, <laughs> session. And I don't need to explain much about Zoom because I think we're all Zoomed out, but this is going to be an interesting one. But one thing I will mention, unless some of you have some burning private questions to share, please, 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 please put them in the chat and hopefully Pinky will be able to answer them all. And if she's not, I will be leading you on to our Slack channel where we have most of our conversation. It's a great community to join. Next slide, please, Pinky. Right, so here it is. Here again is the same link at the top of the product we're going through. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, get connected. We have Flux CDIOI, I mean IO, sorry. Um, you can find us in GitHub. Check out the Flux Docs. I, they're amazing. They're very in depth for developers like ourselves who are just starting out and those who are more advanced. Um, GitHub discussions as well. And obviously, get flux on the cncf slack which is amazing next slide pinky so for all of you that are heading off to kubecon in detroit in two weeks i think it is please make sure you check out the flux project meeting on monday all the information will be in the chat later. Also, we have various amazing talks at GitOpsCon. Wow, that's a tongue twister on Tuesday. And please visit us at the Flux booth. We'd love to have conversations. Last year we'd had, oh, this earlier this year even, we always have loads of maintainers who come across, who want to have conversations, any users, any newbies. Like we just love talking about all the amazing stuff that Flux is doing. And also you can see us at All Things Open on November the 1st. Um, it's a workshop, which will also, I think not that one won't be in line, but if you're in person, please join. And also we have a HashiCorp user group in Luxembourg on November the 30th. Like Pinky will be presenting. It will be amazing. We can't wait. Okay, that's enough of me talking. Pinky, do you want to take it away? Yeah. Um... Okay. Uh, yeah, and actually, uh, I think I forgot to tell Vanessa, but yeah, that All Things Open one is, if you do register virtually for All Things Open, you can actually watch that um, workshop as well. So just a heads up. Okay, uh, yeah, so I'm Priyanka Ravi. I go by Pinky as well. I am a developer experience engineer here at Weaveworks. Um, and before that, not like too long ago, um, still less than a year ago, I was actually at a very large corporation where we, um, my team was the GitOps platform team there. And um, we used Flux to set up GitOps on our, our, our um, on-prem Kubernetes solution. So that's my experience with like being an end user on Fl with Flux. Um, so yeah, um, let's start today. So I'm gonna be giving like a brief introduction of GitOps, sorry, that might've been loud from my <laughs> It didn't mean to clap. Um, I'll be giving a brief introduction in, into GitOps and Flux. Um, and then I will share some um, cool add-ons you can use um, alongside Flux. And then I will end with a pretty, you know, uh, beginner-friendly demo of Flux and some of its abilities. I also apologize if there's background noise. My neighbor is putting in a new roof, so. There's a lot of sounds in the background. Okay, so let's get started. Um, what is GitOps? GitOps is an operating model for cloud native applications such as Kubernetes, but it's not really limited for just Kubernetes. Um, if you're doing like a multi-cloud infrastructure, you can still use GitOps. Um, and I'll be talking about something called the Terraform controller later that could help you do something like that. Um, and then GitOps basically uses, uh, utilizes a version controlled system, most commonly Git, but there are um, a couple of other options uh, as the single source of truth. And it enables continuous delivery through automated deployment, monitoring and management by a version controlled system. And with GitOps, you manage your infrastructure and applications declaratively. So, um, 
The GitOps principles are a set of best practices that have been defined through discussions with many different vendors and users um, experiences by the GitOps working group. Um, and if you want to learn more about the GitOps working group and the GitOps principles, you can go to opengitops.dev. And don't feel like you have to have all of these met in order to actually be using GitOps. Everyone's journey looks really different and you can start using GitOps and then add in um, hardening and tweak your setup to meet these guidelines as you go. But the first one is that a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. So you have everything written in code, um, which leads to things being more reusable. You have an audit trail, lots of benefits that come with having things expressed declaratively. The second is that a desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability, versioning, and retains a complete version history. There's no sneaking in a change here. Um, the third is that software agents automatically pull the desired state declarations from the source. And the fourth is that software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state. So basically you have something such as Flux, which I'll be talking about in a second, that will be sitting in your um, cluster and uh, continuously making sure that what's written in code is what's actually um, uh, uh, live. Okay, so why GitOps? Um, there's so many benefits to GitOps. Um, and because GitOps tools unique ability to treat everything as code, that creates a direct impact on security as well. Um, for example, if all configuration and security policy is treated as code, then everything can be held in version control. And then so then any and all changes that are made are reviewed and um, automated. There's no manual processes, and hopefully you're less likely to be at work on a weekend because of some manual change that was messed up. What is Flux? Flux is a Git-centric package manager for your applications, but like I mentioned a second ago, Git isn't really the only system that you can use. Um, and it provides a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for Kubernetes. It's also um, a natural extension of the benefits of Kubernetes. And at the core of it, it continuously monitors your version control system and it applies the desired state that's been declaratively stated there. Um, and the nice part of this is that you don't have to worry about configuration drift because it reconciles on a schedule. So if for some reason things have gotten out of sync, it will actually set it back to the desired state. And it also really re reduces developer burden because it removes the need for manual deployment processes. Also, uh, the Flux command line tool is a convenient way to bootstrap the system in a cluster, and I'll explain that in a bit during the demo, um, and also to access the custom resources that make up the API as well. Um, we have these like little statements that we like to go over with um, about Flux that kind of just familiarize you with like some of the cool features of Flux. Um, Flux provides GitOps for both apps and infrastructure, and using Flux and Flagger, you can uh, deploy apps with Canaries, Feature Flags, and AB rollouts. Um, Flux can also manage any Kubernetes resource, and infrastructure and workload dependency management is built in. You just push to Git, and Flux does the rest. And like I mentioned earlier, Flux manages deployments um, through automatic reconciliation. Flux works with your existing tools, um, it was created uh, with you know all these things in mind. So it works with your Git providers, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and um, you can even use S3 compatible buckets as a source as well. All major container registries and all CI workflow providers. Um, it also works with any Kubernetes and all common Kubernetes tooling, and uh, such as like customize Helm, RBAC, um, policy driven validation. Um, like OPA, Kyverno, admission controllers, it really just simply falls into place with what you're already doing. Um, and we like to say Flux does multi-tenancy and multi-everything. Um, Flux uses true Kubernetes RBAC via impersonation and supports multiple Git repositories. Multi-cluster infrastructure and apps work out of the box with cluster API. Um, Flux can use one Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same or other clusters spin up additional clusters themselves and manage clusters, including life cycles and fleets. Flux also alerts and notifies. Um, Flux provides health assessments, alerting to external systems and external events handling. You just get push and get notified on Slack and other systems. And um, users really trust Flux. I, like I said, I, I'm 
an end user. Uh, I was an end user, <laughs> um, and it's great. Um, and also, the community is really like nice to work with. We also welcome contributors of any kind, um, any level. The con components of Flux are on Kubernetes core controller runtime, so anyone can contribute, and its functionality can be extended very easily. Um, so what are the benefits of Flux? Flux reduces developer burden. Um, it removes the cube control problem. So like if uh, you don't have to worry about cube control versions in order to be able, able to interact with the cluster. Um, it's also extensible, it's super versatile. Um, it works with your existing tools. It's flexible, modular, and a natural extension of Kubernetes. Um, and because of the microservice architecture, it's also extendable. You pick and choose what you want um, to use to tailor your own experience with it. And like I mentioned before, um, it comes with out-of-the-box support for Customize and Helm, and it was designed completely for Kubernetes in mind. So um, here is an overview of Flux. Flux is a set of Kubernetes controllers, and if you're not familiar with controllers, um, they are used to control uh, objects, life cycles in Kubernetes, um, such as the creation, deletion, updates, anything like that. Um, and so, um, yeah, the Flux controller, the Flux is made up of these controllers. And um, so the first one is the source controller, which fetches resources and stores them as artifacts. And then there's the customized controller, which then applies manifests and runs manifest generation using customize. The Helm controller um, controls deployment of Helm charts, and the notification controller um, specializes in handling inbound and outbound events. The image controllers, so we have the image reflector controller, which reflects um, image metadata for automation controller, and the image automation controller updates YAML when new container images are available. So they um, work together to update a Git repository when new container images are available. And I do see a question in the chat about um, if Flux is different from Argo CD. Yeah, they are different tools um, to accomplish GitOps. So Flux is a completely different tool with a completely different architecture. So um, most recently, I think it was earlier this year, like maybe a month, a couple months ago, uh, Flux actually added OCI support, um, which we're really excited about. Um, this is a big deal. And so, uh, uh, yeah, sorry distracted by the chat. <laughs> OCI, if you're not familiar with it, is the Open Container Initiative. Um, it provides several specifications for image formats, distribution, and execution. And brought together, these three provide a very powerful tool set. Um, OCI has basically moved from cont Docker containers to an application delivery format in and of itself. Um, with Flux, you can distribute and reconcile Kubernetes configuration packaged as OCI artifacts. Instead of connecting Flux to a Git repository where the application desired state is defined, you can connect Flux to a container registry where you'll push the application deploy manifests right next to the container um, application container images. So um, using OCI instead of Git is particularly useful when the Git repository doesn't contain the final Kubernetes manifests. If you are using Qlang, JSONit, or any other tool that generates Kubernetes resources in YAML format, you can run the generators in CI and publish the resulting manifests as OCI artifacts for Flux to consume. Um, and some of the recent features specifically within OCI uh, support is the addition of support for Helm charts stored in OCI registries. Um, we also have support for generation and consumption of OCI customization artifacts and um, recently also added verification of OCI artifacts with Cosign. And um, I think Vanessa is gonna be dropping links to those specific features if you are interested. Okay, so another thing that we have, uh, uh, like, uh, so now I'm gonna be going over basically some like things that you can use as add-ons to your Flux experience. Um, Flamingo is our latest one, and it is a Flux subsystem for Argo. And Flamingo's container image can be used as a drop-in replacement for the equivalent Argo CD version to visualize and manage Flux workloads alongside Argo CD. Um, you can check it out at this GitHub link. So this would enable you to be able to take um, advantage of something like the Terraform controller, which I'm going to mention in the next, uh, next things, but also any, any Flux features such as the OCI support and stuff like that as well. So 
The Terraform controller is something that I'm particularly very excited about because I really, really um, have, like, from everything, I've, I've done several talks on the Terraform controller, but also I've gotten so much good feedback on it. Um, I know there's a lot of, like, community interest in it, especially myself included. Um, like I mentioned, I had experience in the past um, on a GitOps plat platform team, and the Terraform controller would have been really nice to have then as well for us um, for managing our Terraform resources. So. Uh, the flux controller is, um, a co no, the Terraform controller is a flux controller that can manage Terraform resources and it's not limited to Kubernetes resources. It's anything that Terraform can, you know, stand up. Um, here are some links so you can, uh, check it out on the GitHub. There's, um, really great docs, um, as well that list, uh, a bunch of use cases where, uh, <laughs> yes, we are excited about the Terraform controller. Sorry, chat. Um, but yes, uh, the um, use cases are really, really cool because there's so many new features and I'm gonna go over a couple of them in a bit, but um, it's just exciting that uh, it's, it's something that's like continuously being worked on. And if you do use it, please let us know. So the benefits of it are um, that it, you can use full GitOps automation. Um, you can use GitOps for existing Terraform resources. Um, you know, you can use it to plan and manually apply Terraform if you don't wanna be doing automated um, uh, um, applications. Uh, also you can use it, uh, as drift detection, which I'll mention in the next slide too. And basically it becomes like, you know, the glue for Terraform resources and Kubernetes workloads as well. Um, so some of the features of the Terraform controller are that you can do manual and auto approvals. So you don't have to have it, um, like if you want to be using it, like, you know, the GitOps way, I guess, um, of having it do automatic applies, you can, but you can also set it to not do auto applies and make sure that you have the ability to check out the plan and then um, approve the plan as well. Um, the drift detection is pretty cool. I actually um, recently did a little demo with it too, where um, you can use it even without having Flux actually manage your deployments. So you can just set it up to notify you, let's say in Slack, if for some reason anything gets out of sync with how it should be in your um, Terraform resources. Uh, and then you can also, uh, it also accepts a list of config maps and secrets as variables. Um, so I did see a question, how is the state managed with Terraform controller in the chat? So the state file is um, by default set stored as a secret in Kubernetes, but you can um, you like set a background back end. And it also works with um, TFC and TFE integration as well. So um, I have played around with that as well to store the um, state and everything like that. But okay, so also it does health checks. Um, you can set it up to do health checks and make sure your things are all healthy. Um, you can set it to destroy resources on deletion. That's not the default behavior. Um, and then you can also write outputs to a secret. Um, concurrency is something that we, we are very excited about most recently. Um, uh, the Terraform controller team was like really thrilled to announce that they, uh, the controller is now greatly scalable um, to reconcile and provision high volumes of Terraform modules concurrently. Um, and the team actually recently tested the controller with 1500 Terraform modules, which is really crazy. Um, and uh, with that, you can also customize the runner pod as well. Um, and you can, um, it also works with OCI artifacts as sources. And um, recently they added the force unlock Terraform state as well. So, um, okay, so another uh, addition you can use is the um, GitOps tools for Flux uh, Visual Studio Code extension. And this extension is more intended to enhance the developer experience. Um, a lot of people are using VS Code today. I, I love this extension. I will actually be showing it um, in the demo because I like to use it as well. And it's an intuitive way to manage troubleshoot and operate your Kubernetes environment following the GitOps operating model. Um, you can accelerate your deployment lifecycle and simplify your continuous delivery pipelines. Um, and you can find it on GitHub and you can also um, down download it from the Visual Studio Marketplace. And if you do use it, please, uh, we love to hear feedback on it. It's something that's still like a work in progress as well. Um, and we are, are very excited about it. So um, lastly, I wanted to mention Weave GitOps. Um, Weave GitOps Core is the is a also a free and open source uh, um, software that adds a web UI that surfaces key information.
to help application operators easily discover and resolve issues with Flux. Um, it's an intuitive works infer interface that provides a guided experience to build understanding and simplify getting started for new users. Um, you can easily discover the relationship between Flux objects, and navigate to deeper levels of understanding as required. Um, it's a pretty neat UI. I've done some demos with it as well. Um, you can uh, reconcile things, you can suspend things. There's great like graphs and stuff that show um, the breakdown of all your applications. So please check that out as well. Um, there's, th this is the GitHub for that as well. And then um, it also has documentation that you can check out um, about that. So now I'm going to be doing a demo and uh, let me, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a demo. Were there any questions that I missed? Um, does it have its own UI to check for health? I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. So uh, if, if that question was in regards to Terraform controller specifically, no, but you can use the weave GitOps um, uh, UI like basically you install it over Flux so you install you already bootstrapped Flux and then you install the Weave GitOps UI as well um, and so that yeah that does have a health UI um, and stuff like that and the nice thing is um, the notification controller is pretty cool to use too for notifying you if anything like is um, for some reason not reconciling or if anything's um, unhealthy so that's really an easy way to do that as well okay now moving on. <laughs> To the demo. Um, let me. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to show, I already created a um, kind cluster. So let me make this bigger. Let me know if I, if that's like, is that big enough? Um, will someone let me know in the chat if, if they want me to make the terminal size, font size Maybe bigger? It's good. Okay. Oh wait, was that a yes? Is in like that? No, it's good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So let me make this one bigger too. All right. So like I said, I've already created a kind cluster. So now I'm going to run a um, bootstrap in that cluster. And what this is doing, you can see it's uh it's so it's using that flux CLI I mentioned earlier. And it's the bootstrap command and it's telling it to create a GitHub um, bootstrap into GitHub. And as you can see here, it's saying like, you know, under my ownership, uh, this repository should be called Flux Demo. And um, the path that you should bootstrap into is cluster slash my cluster. And so what this is doing is if this repository already exists under Priyanka-Ravi, then it will um, just bootstrap into that existing repo. But if the repo doesn't exist, it will actually create a new repo. And in this case, it didn't exist. So it created one. Um, and then also on top of that, it um, cl cl clones the repo and then pushes all of the necessary manifests up to it. So I'll show you what it did. Let's refresh this. Okay, so we can go in here. And if we go in here and look, um, so it created these files. So these are the manifests I was talking about. Um, if you are familiar with customization um, already, then maybe the term customization controller is either confusing or maybe it makes sense. I don't know. Um, but don't be confused between the two. So the customization controller is so named because it uses customization in the background. So when you give it a path, when you tell um, the customization controller to go apply manifests in a path, it's actually by default looking for a customization YAML. And if it finds one, it'll apply what's specified in there. If it does not find one, it will actually create its own customization file in its, in its, like, um, in the background. And it will just apply, um, all files recursively within that path that it finds. So all YAMLs, all YAMLs within that path, all manifests. Um, so, um, in this case, right, we're telling it to apply the resources, um, GOTK components and GOTK sync. So, if I go back and look, um, GOTK components is this huge file that has um, the namespace. Uh, the namespace that gets created is flux system. That's where all the components go, all the controllers and everything like that. 
Um, and then this has all of the uh, controllers specified in this file, and it also has all the CRDs, everything that's needed that Flux um, requires in order to run. So it's, yeah, it's got everything in here. Then um, we have this GOTK sync YAML. And so this is kind of where I think the magic of Bootstrap comes into play for me. Um, it's the fact that Bootstrap creates Flux, but also makes Flux listen to this repo itself. So any changes that happen in this repo are actually being realized as well. So it's kind of creating this whole um, way to manage itself, which is really neat. So this um, Git repository is the way to uh, set up a source that points to the Git repository. Um, and this tells the source controller to um, every minute go and check this URL here, this Flux demo URL, which is this repo that was created, um, and check the main branch and pull um, the manifest from there every, every minute. And then um, the customization one is telling the customization controller to then, um, it says uh, source ref is the one that's right above here, the, the Flux system one and it's telling it to um, apply any files that it finds or, or a customization YAML, right? Um, that it finds in this clusters, my cluster path, which is again, remember the thing that we set in that bootstrap command. And uh, yeah, so that's what that's doing. Um, and then we can do a, let's clear this so it's not messy. Okay, we can do a, control get pods on the flux system namespace so you can see here that we have these um these these uh controllers that i mentioned earlier so these are the ones that get stood up by default you might notice that the image controllers are not installed here that uh you can install it in your bootstrap command i forget the command off the top of my head but there is a flag you can add to your bootstrap command that will allow the, um, that will tell uh, Flux to install the uh, image controllers as well. One thing to note that I forgot to mention about the Flux bootstrap command, which is really cool, is that it can be run as many times as you want um, and recommended so. Uh, if you, let's say you update the Flux CLI, then, um, and rerun the Flux bootstrap command, it will actually update your Flux instance as well. So it's a neat way to keep all your Flux, um, your Flux controllers up to date with the newest features that are being released and everything like that. So that's a cool feature as well. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, oh, one second. All right, so uh, let me... Let me, so I think I, oh, <laughs> sorry. That's what I was doing. I already have that from when I was running it earlier. So let me remove it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to clone it and, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. I think my, my command got lost when I copied it. It's in the bed. All right, give that a second. Okay, so now I've cloned it. Um, let me CD into it. And let me go to here. No, no, didn't mean to do that. So give it a second. Oh man. Okay, so um, let me full screen this. So this is the VS Code extension that I mentioned earlier that is the um, the GitOps for Flux uh, extension. And um, as you can see here right now, we have one source and um, one customization like we saw in the um, um, manifests as well. Um, and so I can come in here, I can reconcile, um, I can reconcile, I can suspend. I could delete sources. I could do whatever I want in here, but it's a really cool way to um, very quickly, and you'll and we'll see it in a second. Very quickly, um, make changes and and uh, apply them. Okay, so now I am going to create a tenant. So if you're wanting to do something like um, very simple, um, 
like multi-tenancy, soft multi-tenancy. So this is where, you know, you have namespaces instead. Um, oh, I didn't create it yet. Duh. But if you want to basically create um, like namespaces, so this is what I did in my experience with multi-tenancy. Um, and so this is like a very simple command to create um, a new namespace. And I'll show you what it just created in here as well. Um, it created the new namespace. And then, um, well, sorry, it didn't create anything yet because I, I used that uh, export part of the command. So I did this dash dash export, right? And what that's saying is don't actually go create the tenant yet, but instead export the manifest that would be created into this um, rbac.yaml. If I had left out this export part, then I would already have a namespace and everything created, but I, I wanna show you what's being created and I'm trying to do this the proper GitOps way, right? So um, everything expressed declaratively, remember? <laughs> so um, it's creating this new namespace and then it's creating a service account and a role binding. So actually by default, um, there is some uh, tenancy um, uh, locks in place, some some uh, security and everything added so that it, it only has you know access to deploy things within its own namespace and stuff like that by default. So just uh, know that that's there. So then I'm going to create a, um, Customization, nope, I didn't create my source yet, sorry. I'm gonna first create a source um, that's going to be pointing, because remember how earlier when I bootstrapped, I told that source to listen, or the, that customization to specifically listen to only, um, uh, um, wait, I'm getting confused on myself, hold on. Ignore me, this is fine. <laughs> This is to create, sorry, I'm getting lost in my own thoughts. This is to create a um, new uh, deployment for this new pod info. So if you're familiar, I mean, I, I know a lot of people have already played around with pod info um, before. So I'm gonna be pointing to this pod info deploy repository. This is one that I have cloned myself. Um, I mean, fl forked myself from the actual, you know, pod info application. Uh, um, repository that maybe some people are already familiar with. Um, but I forked it. It's very simple. It just has backend uh, YAMLs and then a front end YAMLs as well. So let me go back. Okay, so now I've um, exported this. So if we go to sync, we can see this new source part that was created. And then now I'll create that customization as well. Uh, gonna make me type it all out sorry hold please Now, if I go back in here, we can see that, oh no, it did try to do something. Hold on, let me get rid of that. Okay, so now if we go in here, we can see that um, it created now this, uh, it exported this source and customization, these new ones. And like I said, it's pointing to that pod info deploy um, repository URL. And specifically, we wanna just apply everything in there. Both are running on one minute intervals as well, so. Now I am going to push these. Okay. So I can actually, um, I have two options, right? I can come in here and I can say reconcile this directly from here, or I could have um, also run a command using the flux uh, CLI as well. So I could have said flux reconcile customization flux system, and I can even say dash dash with source, and that will actually um, 
do both. Or I can just reconcile the source um, and because there is a change that it notices, it will also call up to the customization to make the change as well. So it's one way to do it. Now get um, So I can say flux get source get dash a and this will pull all of the get sources um, from any namespace. Likewise, I can say um, flux get customization all and it pulls from all the resource uh, namespaces. And so in this case, we can see that this new one was created um, as well as the new source, but also that, you know, it's been applied. Everything's all good. So if we go to k get pods, um, we can see now that there is a back end and a front end. And so I'm just gonna, um, in a separate terminal, I'm just gonna run a port forward. So that's just gonna be running. And then if I go back to Chrome, and to this now, I can see that, you know, this application is up and running here. So we're going to um, make like a quick chat test ch change, sorry, a quick change in the um, application. And then we will uh, see the how Flux reconciles that change. So let us go into VS Code. And I have this other... So I've already, you know, cloned it, uh, the pod info, deploy one. And let's go into the, you know, the front end deployment here. And we have this UI color and we will change it um, to something super boring. <laughs> I say boring, it's just basic, okay. And then um, we'll just push that change And this time we'll just uh, run it in here. Okay, so now we can see that the uh, SHA has changed for this one. And if we go back, oh, right, I need to <laughs> re-stand up the port forward. Give me a second. There it is. So. There's the updated background that was done. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to show the drift, you know, if something happens uh, to get out of sync or anything like that, how the drift detection works um, or the configuration drift management specifically how it works. Um, so I, I can go in, you know, and just Oh, sorry, dash and test. It's like, oh no. Um, okay, so that's now deleted. Um, and if we go get it, it's already back up and running, but you can see now that the, that was quick. <laughs> I must've caught it on a reconcile, but you can see that now the age uh, is seven seconds instead of three minutes. So it did get restood up. It just happened so fast that I couldn't even catch it before it happened already. So. Um, those are the things I really wanted to highlight about Flux. Um, that's it for my demo. Uh, let me go back to my slides. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, just wanted to highlight some things. Uh, join us on Flux discussions if you have any more questions. Um, uh, this is our, that, that the link is that. And then also um, our Flux community as well. Um, fluxcd.io Flux slash community. Join the GitOps community group. Um, if you want more info on GitOps, you can go to gitops.community as well. 
and join the GitOps community LinkedIn group. And like Vanessa mentioned, also we have that Slack, um, the Flux Slack as well um, in the CNCF Slack. We have the Flux channel in the CNCF Slack, the Slack that you can check us out in as well. Um, let's see. Do we have, okay, so question now. Do we have to reconcile it every time manually instead it can't be auto? No. So um, that's that's what I kind of was, I, I sorry, I didn't really mention that, I guess, very well, um, very clearly. But if you noticed in that, uh, let me go back. One second, let me access this. So if you noticed in here, um, in all of these syncs, uh, in all of these sources and customizations, there's this interval. So basically what that means is every minute, the source controller in this case is actually going to go in and check those manifests to see if there's a change and then it'll pull them. And like I said, if there is a change, actually it will automatically hit the customization controller and tell it to make that change to apply, uh, to reconcile. But if, if not, right, if otherwise, um, this customization controller specifically in this case is running every 10 minutes um, to hard sync with um, the changes. And specifically that, that test one we created um, is running every minute. And that's why you saw when I deleted the back end, it, I, I caught it basically within that minute um, to where it reconciled before I could even, uh, you know, like <laughs> show you that it was gone because I, it was just timing. If, if not, we would have had to sit here for 60 seconds, right? And wait for the one minute interval to come back. But I did want to show you that it's, also automatically reconciling without me doing it. Um, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, sorry for, for those uh, that aren't looking at the chat right now. Um, I was asked about my social handle. You can um, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, hmm. Well, I can find the link for that, but also uh, you can find me on Twitter. Um, it's P-I-N-K-Y-Y-R-A-V-I. I don't know. Here's the link to my LinkedIn as well. Are there any other questions? Oh wait. Oh, I, I, I missed one. Um, is this just organizing Kubernetes locally? How do you use Flux to, for example, link with Terraform and multi-deploy to remote? Um, okay. So let me see if I understand this question, but I think so in this case, I was using kind to um, deploy, like to show this demo. But if I understand this correctly, this is more for like, you know, situations where you have um, Kubernetes either in multi-cloud or on-prem. Is that maybe the question? Sorry if I'm not understanding. But if that is the question, um, I have uh, done that as well. Um, I've used Flux for both, uh, I, um, we've used it for EKS and we also used it for our on-prem Kubernetes solution back at the company I used to work for. Um, and it's very easy to set up there as well. Um, you, same thing, you just have it listening to a Git repo. Um, and then with the Terraform stuff, you install the Terraform controller separately. I think Stacy might have linked to a talk that I did on the Terraform controller with like a, it's got a demo on how to set it up. But so you set it up after your Flux deployment and then um, it's, so it's running from Kubernetes, but it, it, it can uh, apply any of your Terraform resources. So it can be managing, you know, your AWS deployments or um, anything like that, basically uh, Azure, um, yeah. Did that answer your question though? Um, Crawford, I'm not sure. Okay, cool. Awesome. Did I miss any questions? I don't think so. I think that was all the questions. Vanessa, did you, did you see any? that I missed. Um, okay, cool. Well, um, I think that's all. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. We, we hope you got, you know, uh, like you learned a lot out of this. Um, please let us know, like chat with us on Slack um, and catch us next time when we do another uh, meetup as well. So keep an eye out for that.
Thank you.